Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode of Northlands National Park, our Planet Zoo franchise mode hard mode experience, we are going to be expanding our zoo to the top of the hill where our monorail ends up at the end of its journey. So this station is going to be a little bit more basic than the entrance one and I'm going with the idea that we're a little bit further into the zoo so we're a little bit more isolated from what would be the main entrance and the easy route to get stuff in for building materials etc. So we're going to be going with kind of a reclaimed and reused theme for this station. So I'm imagining that basically this has been an old mine or something and this has been an ore storage or maybe just a place where the minecarts get left overnight or it's part of the minecart station exit where the minecarts are brought up from the mine and the ore is dumped out. So we're just going to be using a lot of the old temple stone brickwork things like the pillars and the crumbling support columns that I really like using and I wanted to make them kind of a main feature of a build this time rather than just using them to bulk something out. So we're going to be using them quite a bit in this station build. I want to lean a bit more into the simplicity of it all as well by using some really basic materials. So it's just going to be a case of wood planks, corrugated iron roofing and a little bit of like basic simple fencing rather than making anything too complex. As if this build was there in the first place when we first came into the zoo and started developing the land and we have just kind of used what's already here to finish off that station. Not that it's not going to look good, I'm going to try and make it look as like beautiful as possible for what it's going to be anyway, <laughs> but I just wanted to keep everything simple seeing as the last build was a little bit overly complex and I wanted to have a little bit of a break from uh, using my brain a bit too much and just do something really quite simple. So we're using these really thin wooden planks and the reason I wanted to use them to make my walls was I'm going to put some ivy all over this station as if nature's began to reclaim it and we kind of come in, cut it back and redeveloped. So it's actually really useful using thin pieces like this because the ivy being the 3D texture that it is, it will kind of clip through both sides of that wall and it'll save me using lots of pieces and making things a little bit jumbled up and things like that. So uh, that's why I've done that and also uh, I just wanted to try something a little bit different instead of using walls and it adds a really nice dimension against the thickness of those stone supports. So this is pretty much it for the station. We will obviously be putting a few trims and things on and then our advertising hoardings and all of that sort of thing will be going up as well as any sort of exterior fencing but the station surround itself is going to be as simple as this. Uh, I don't want to do too much more to it. I think it looks good as it is and it kind of leans into the theme that we're going for in this part of the build. The other thing I'm going to do in this episode is build a brand new staff area on this side of the mountain and the reason I'm doing that is because we don't actually have a quarantine or a vet surgery up here and we don't actually have one in the zoo at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a big staff facility that is into the side of one of the mountains uh, probably just to the right of your screen here. Uh, we'll swing round in a little bit and I'll show you exactly where I mean. And we're going to basically again use our imagination to pretend that there was a mine here in the past and it's now been closed off and everything but that kind of entrance work is still there and we have moved in and adapted it to create a staff research facility that is basically containing everything that we could possibly need for our staff. And I'll run a staff path right the way down that should hopefully join up with our main staff and entrance area where the reindeer habitat is and the information center. And that'll just run right down the side of the mountain to save the staff having a really long and arduous journey all the way around past the cabins and up the side of the mountain because they obviously can't get on the monorail track with a elephant in a box. <laughs> Not that we have elephants here, but you know. <laughs> the next step in the station build is to arrange our station entrance and exit put in our queues and put in our exit path. Now this path here is cutting alongside the mountain where I want my new staff area to go and I'm just marking out a little path there that runs down the side that I will put in in another episode because I want to make sure that my staff can actually get down and you can see there the back of the information center it pretty much when we build a path here will join up with the staff area on that information center. So really nice use of space and I think it'll really work if we can get it uh, formed to the terrain well enough anyway. 
So I'm trying to cut down on my underground building and all of these things. I'm not saying I'm not doing it, I'm just not going to show it. So this is probably going to be the last time you're going to see any sort of extensive underground building. Uh, I'm either going to build things the right way and put in the uh, ground floor and stuff before I put a roof on top of things, or I'm just not going to show it at all. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really difficult to build in that sort of cramped space, and I don't think it looks nice to show it to people either. So... I will basically do it and explain to you guys what I did or I'll do it the right way and the appropriate way by not putting a roof on something before I start building. But <laughs> that aside, we have one, two, three, four, five, six staff buildings here. We have a workshop, a trade center, a mechanics hut, a quarantine, a vet surgery and a large staff room. And all I'm doing here is using corrugated iron sheeting that we're gonna put up. We're then gonna pull the terrain back in to close it all in and uh, smooth out the terrain to make it look like it's part of the natural landscape. I'm then going to build an outside structure so that it looks like there's kind of more to this, like maybe some offices or something somewhere within the build that the staff have access to. And then we're just going to make it look nice and pretty on the inside as well. Because I have noticed uh, a lot of my builds uh, so far in this zoo have 100% scenery weight. In fact, most of them, all of them do. They've all got 100% scenery rating. Everything's uh, looking really nice, which uh, I've never actually focused too much on before. It just kind of happened so far, but I want to make sure that I'm continuing that throughout the rest of this zoo build, which uh, was a little bit difficult when I was uh, decorating the train station at the top here because, well, I didn't realize what little tip for you. Uh, the attractiveness of your train stations are actually only derived from the queue. So... <laughs> If your queue is attractive, it doesn't really matter about the rest of your station. So there's a small radius around the queue that you put in place. And what I was doing was I was doing a lot of decorating on one side of the station, which was not in the radius of the queue. And I was like, why is this not going up? Why is it stuck on like 90% attractiveness? And then suddenly uh, it occurred to me that it is probably the place where people are actually waiting. That is where I need to make it look pretty. And that's what I did, and it ended up at 100% attractiveness again. So, again, back in here, we're digging out our entrance here, and we're just going to smooth that all down and then put in our staff path. And then we're going to make a nice little entrance there as well uh, to kind of hide that staff area from the rest of the guests. So all they're going to see is kind of this exterior. There will be a sign denoting exactly what this building does. Uh, again, it'll be a custom sign. Make sure you look out for it because there's a clue in that sign to what our next habitat is going to be uh it's finally time to build another habitat i've been uh we're what three episodes of uh random constructions that aren't animal related now <laughs> and uh, i'd like to uh give you guys some more animals to look at uh i'm not going to tell you what it is uh you will spot the clue though uh, and uh, obviously the title of the next episode will tell you exactly what it's going to be but uh, I had a lot of fun doing this because I, I d it didn't require too much thinking or planning and I could just play around, put down some simple things and this is actually just going to be uh, corrugated iron with some steel girder beams in there and then some planters. I'm just going to make it look nice and pretty. We're going to use some of the fluorescent lighting that hangs down from the ceiling and as well as that we're going to put a couple of light tubes on the walls as well just to really finish it off. So I didn't do a lot of interior decorating in that one because again I didn't really want to show it on, on the uh, recording but I will show you it in the exit preview where we do the mini tour of things. Also um, Time is passing relatively quickly because I keep having to run the simulation. Uh, we I do have animal updates and everything, uh, like we've had uh, more offspring. The hezzy, hairy desert scorpions are pumping out babies like there's no tomorrow. So are the snails. They're making us a lot of like passive income. And uh, we actually ended up paying off our loans at some point. Uh, we now know we've got no like loan debt or reliance on loans everything's just kind of coming in so it's probably a perfect time to now finally start doing a new habitat and we are actually going to lay the foundations of that at the end of this episode so i'm going to explain a little bit about what i want the habitat to do without telling you exactly what it is so here we are just building those outside towers and uh, i imagine these were old like ore hoppers or something where the ore would come in and be sorted through and all of that sort of thing and we want to put in some little offices so we're going to be using some of the emissive light panels to create some windows so that when it gets to night time they'll emit light and it'll look like there's someone in there working late at night 
And then we're going to use some of the grates and other things and little fences just to decorate this and make it look a little bit more three-dimensional as opposed to just a flat shape. So we're creating some posts here, supporting structures with the Arctic wood beams again, which of course are now a staple of this zoo. I'm using these a lot because I just think they're really cool. Uh, they're a nice size so that they kind of just wrap around the corner and create a nice neat edge on things. And you can also use them together by flipping them around and changing the angle of them to create some really nice supporting structures that have variety of depth to them. And I just think that's a really nice thing to do. It also has a nice like contrast in colour. Again, I keep talking about this, but I think it's really important to have that within a build because it makes everything stand out just that little bit more and it saves you a lot of time in making any sort of changes and things and messing around with materials. Now I do notice that there's a few bits of uh, hillside poking in and I've decided to leave them because I think that looks cool still. And we're just putting these little grates on. I think they look really cool and uh, they're a nice big piece so you can just shove them in there and get them lined up and they don't really uh, have a great footprint on any sort of processing power or whatever and it's just a nice way to finish off a build we then put in those emissive light panels and then put some lights down again just the fluorescent light tubes because we want this to be a kind of clean and clinical looking building i forgot to mention as well i used opaque glass for the floor and uh, i just think that the way that the light reflects off it i think looks really nice and it makes the inside of this structure look a lot bigger than it actually is and that's something that i wanted to uh, really quite focus on in this build you know you, you nobody likes working in cramped spaces so it always helps to have that little bit of extra in there to make something look a little bit bigger it's like working in like an office or something they use a lot of big windows to make the space look a little bit more impressive and increase the uh, size without actually increasing the size so i wanted to kind of do that in this build as there are no windows in the building because we're jutting into the side of a mountain <laughs> we're just putting on the finishing touches here by making a little outside trim and then we are now moving into daylight finally <laughs> so a little bit of rock work here to cover the terrain malformation here at the bottom underneath the train station which just happens as the station gets placed it does cut the terrain out a little bit so we're just going to fill in some holes here with some of the rock and just make sure that it's all nice and neat same again around the other side we're just copying and pasting little bits of rock here just to finish off filling in that hole now underneath the station i could also do this as well but i decided to just leave it as an open void i may run a texture brush over that and change it to a rock bed instead and now we've got a few other bits and pieces to do here so i was struggling to work out how I would actually develop the exterior of the station because it was a little bit cramped uh, I didn't want to do too much clipping and uh, matching things up and I also didn't want to have my path have to be changed too much because there's not a lot of space to readjust that so I just put in some simple temple stone brick walls to start us off with now a lot of my builds at the moment have been using these pieces kind of as a more of a tool than an actual decorative piece they always end up getting taken out and i mainly use it to give me a guide as you can see here we're using it as a guide to put in these stone bricks we're then taking them away because i wanted to go with something that was a little bit more attractive than just using the same pieces that i always use i also wanted to use something that kind of had already been used within the zoo to continue any sort of thematic creativity throughout so you know there's there's little like bits of fence and things that we've already used that i wanted to bring up here and just you know you want you want something to start off quite heavy in one area of the zoo then just gradually fade out as another more impressive or appropriate or thematic device comes through so we're going to use these fences that we actually had wrapped all the way around the reindeer habitat but i'm going to add in a new world fence underneath it as a trim and then what we could then do is start using those new world pieces a little more prominently as the planet zoo fence that we've already used fades out and that's kind of how i want to work this zoo in where we have these moments where there's two different types of architecture crossing and then the one that we've just started using takes over as the main piece of architecture and then another bit comes in as well to take that off and 
that's how the zoo will develop as we go and it just means that from a visual perspective you're looking through and you're seeing these things that are like little nods to previous areas within the zoo as a new and more advanced build comes into play or what have you and you know you, you don't want to go this is one area and we move into the next area and it's totally different all the way because it looks like a different zoo basically it looks like you 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 and I get it for like a theme park or whatever where you would have different themed areas and I also get it if you're having like a multitude of different biomes that are quite close together in a small zoo you would want that kind of you are in the Aztec zone and now you are in the space zone I mean that that's uh, the crystal maze not the uh, planet zoo <laughs> you are in a tiger biome and now you are in a tundra biome or you're in an Africa exhibit and we're now moving into an australia exhibit so you would want that really heavy clash with the architecture there but in this zoo i don't want that we're using all of our reclaimed materials we're trying to use different uh, bits of stonework and woodwork that we've kind of found naturally occurring or that has been part of whatever previous builds we've had so we're just taking a quick step back here to have a look at what's been done so far we've got these really nice fences and then a couple of lighting fixtures put in place the thing that i've been finding more difficult at the moment is getting my lighting to work so it find it's not very emissive when I use some of the lighting fixtures and then some of the other ones I find are too emissive so we're getting far too much light off things I'm not too bothered about these lights in the station but I'm finding it really difficult when I'm actually lighting habitats and exhibits so if anybody does have any tips for me in terms of lighting please do drop me a comment because I really would like to hear some of your hints and tips for getting better lighting throughout the zoo I have tried using different splashes of color and things within the lights and that does kind of tone down the overly bright stuff but sometimes it tones it down too much what I would really like is those planet zoo um, that look like stage lights and theater lights if you could just adjust the uh, edges of those lights I think that would be really great like if you could make them fade a little bit easier rather than just being this solid block of color that would be really really good and I would definitely use them a lot more if we had that option so again back to the build uh, you saw a little bit earlier on I moved some of those new world fences as you can see just on your right of your screen here we've put them up as a upper trim we then put some trees in I think they were Scots pine or they may have been Himalayan pines uh, just to really add a little bit more of a decorative element to the thing because we're trying to keep a lot of trees going throughout this zoo but we're also trying to kind of pepper them in as well so that as you can see we're going from like a predominantly Himalayan pine area we're going to have a couple of Scots pines getting dotted in and then a major forest of Scots pines that sort of thing everything kind of has this almost like a relay race going on where we're just passing one to the next we're going to put some conservation boards in now there's no path here so guests can't actually walk up to these and read them but I just wanted to put them in as a decorative touch I don't know if just being kind of in that area of influence of those conservation boards actually improves the education rating of guests but I just like them there as a decorative element anyway we then threw down our caribou moss because I love it and I think it works really well in this build and actually it blends in quite nicely to that grass which wasn't my intended uh, <laughs> idea that's just something I've just noticed threw up a broken Himalayan or Scots pine I think it was a Himalayan pine and then just had a quick little observation here so we're going to be decorating a little bit more of this obviously I want it to be this fully fleshed out feature by the end of it with lots of trees and grass and shrubbery and stuff in so we're just going to make a little bit of an adjustment here with this rock work just to cover up the uh, final imperfections with the path I didn't want to do like a full trim for this so I just thought it would be nice to have it almost embedded into the stone here rather than a full-on fence with an angled fence going up to it I just think it looks quite nice as something that's a little bit more simple threw down some trees to start us off but these larger ones I do eventually remove because they uh, they obscure the eyesight too much when you're looking at the habitat from afar and I prefer having some smaller trees here so the bigger trees will eventually be they do get moved around the side of the track bearing in mind that the track may end up becoming a habitat speaking of habitats let's start planning our new one so I'm not going to tell you exactly what habitat this is going to be but I want it to have some sort of water feature with an island in the middle and a bridge that I will build across it so if you haven't actually seen my mini where I 
talk about update 1.8 which is coming out on the 14th uh, it will actually by the time this video goes out update 14 will have been released as well update 14 update 1.8 which comes out on december 14th <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I wanted it to have a island in the middle with a little moat going around it Which is going to be important because that's going to be an area of attractiveness to try and draw guests to it I also wanted to kind of create a house uh, with a viewing area And the idea of the house is that we would have a couple of levels and guests can go up to access a higher ground Where they will see this animal uh, playing or sleeping or whatever and then downstairs there'd be a bit more of a private area potentially that the staff can access and in that area they'll be able to give them some food or what have you and that would be kind of our hidden staff access and I wasn't really sure how to go about it and I think this is one of the problems that I'm having in creating here is uh, maybe thinking about things a little bit too much and over designing from the off when actually what I could really do is just play. One of the things that I forget to do sometimes when I'm trying to plan episodes well in advance and do this sort of structural work early is I forget what it is to play around with different materials and work on things and, and just take some time to experiment with things. So yeah, I, I wasn't really sure how this would turn out in the end and I eventually settled on something that looked a bit like a old barn, I suppose. And I quite like that. I quite like the idea of uh, repurposing an old barn. Again, it fits in with the features that we're going for in this uh, national park and I think it would look really cool. So we went with this idea and it may change by the time we come to record the episode where we actually build this habitat. But all I know is what I wanted was some sort of living space that had multiple levels that would allow animals a place to sleep but also be seen from the outside by all of our customers. That's what I was going for. A simple idea but I wanted to execute it in an effective way that had a really nice kind of feature to it. So that was the idea. I then wanted that island in the middle surrounded by a moat because I always like to build a water feature in things even if the animals don't really have a water requirement. And then there needed to be a vast amount of open space in between the house and the island because I plan on putting quite a few animals of the same species into this habitat. Now, it, there won't be a few of them at the beginning because the more animals we have, the more feed we have to provide and the more expense that puts on our budget. So it will be a relatively small population to start us off with. I'm um, trying not to give too much away here. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's what we kind of wanted to do. Anyway, so the idea is that the uh, guest path will loop all the way around here. And what I wanted to try and create was a kind of a path over the top of that lower portion of the guest path so the animals could actually move over the top of the guests into another section of the habitat and also an elevated guest path so that they could go up to the second level of the building and see what's going on in there so i left all of that open i then wanted to run a path all the way around the other side so that path, so that the guests could completely circle this building and this habitat and see absolutely everything that they could possibly want to see in there so they get a full 360 degree view of the entire exhibit. So we're just about finished here, ready to go for our showcase. So I hope you enjoy this finished build. And here we go. So there we are, we finished off our queue by fleshing out with a little bit more foliage and some more trees, putting in some smaller ones as opposed to those larger ones. Here we've done this wonderful little entrance. This was really simple. I just used some of the Africa posts to uh, complete a couple of archways and you did maybe catch the signage for our next habitat there. Some jeeps and stuff, some foliage creeping in there and look at this, it looks like a nice little experimental place where they kind of investigate different types of flowers and stuff and see how they grow in different levels of humidity and habitat and stuff and I just think it adds a really nice finishing touch to this otherwise dark and dingy but very clinical area and everything's well lit and signposted now so I was pretty happy with all of that. Up at the station we put in a new world kind of overhang on the top, our funicular signage is there as well 
This is just a copy paste job of the one from the entrance station with a little bit more of an adjusted text to tell you that this is this station as opposed to the other one. Did a little staff door with a nice little cage on it and everything and a few bits of boxes and stuff that are stored in there as well as a cart. I don't know how it got in there because it's way bigger than the door but maybe some silly staff member built it in there and then didn't realise his mistake until it was too late. The funicular up here has a little bit of a loading problem, it seems to take them a long time to actually get onto it, so that's something I'm going to have to adjust in the features a little bit later on. But it looks really cool, it's a nice view coming by, and then I threw in a couple of these reindeers, because tis the season, and I think they look really cool looking in the direction of where you're supposed to be queuing. The last little touch I want to show you is these Fennec Fox statues that I put in there, and back here we are overlooking the rest of it. I think it looks really nice and I hope you do too. If you did, drop me a comment, tell me what you liked about it and uh, like the video, send me a subscribe as well. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time.